Hey guys, it's Jacob from My Biohack, and today we're talking about how lipopolysaccharides induce endotoxemia and what those two words even mean. These two things, they play a huge role in all of chronic disease. You may not know it, but you're probably infected. Infection? What do you mean by infection? Well, what I mean is you probably have a problem with lipopolysaccharides. Let's get a little bit more specific as to what lipopolysaccharides are. Lipopolysaccharides are these little parts of bacteria that break off and can do anything. When you have a leaky gut, which means anything that is in the gut, such as proteins, can get through the gut wall and into the bloodstream. A really quick recap of this. What do we want in our bloodstream? Sugar, we want glucose, we want energy, salts and electrolytes, certain amino acids so we can build proteins. What we don't want are little pieces of bacteria going through into our bloodstream. Now, when this happens, lipopolysaccharides, these little broken pieces of bacteria, they turn on the immune system and create an inflammatory response. This is one basis of autoimmunity. Lipopolysaccharide is so powerful at stimulating an immune response that we use it in science experiments all the time to create a pro-inflammatory response. Why would you want to give yourself lipopolysaccharide induced endotoxemia? Endotoxemia means inside your body having a toxic effect, having dysbiosis, a bad balance of good bacteria and bad bacteria, having a bad balance there can cause lipopolysaccharide induced endotoxemia. Now, this isn't too far off of a strange concept where it can get in through the gut. It can also get in other places. You can inhale lipopolysaccharide, for example, through air pollution. It opens up the tight junctions in the lung, just as smoking. Alcohol can induce it through the gut. Overeating can induce this. Social isolation has also shown to do this. So has chronic stress. And we'll talk a little bit about chronic stress and how it works a little bit later. Right now, I'd like to talk about how LPS, lipopolysaccharides, affects the body. It can cause IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and dysbiosis. When LPS gets in through the intestinal wall, when LPS attacks the intestinal tracts, it promotes inflammation of the gut. The majority of the time that this happens is only when the gut is compromised. For example, with low secretory IgA levels. This can cause irritable bowel disease. One main cause of this could be a diet high in inflammatory lectins. Now, lectins are things that can break open tight junctions, turn on zonulin, and open up the gut. High LPS levels can also create high levels of biofilms. You can also see people with high LPS levels have higher levels of inflammatory Th1 and Th17 cytokines. And when chronically exposed, it can cause the vagus nerve to become weaker in tone. Like I said before, lipopolysaccharides can cause autoimmunity. This is because it activates T cells to create a inflammatory response, which thus can attack its own self. Lipopolysaccharide can also induce sickness behavior and fatigue. So if you get tired after meals, you may just have lipopolysaccharide induced fatigue. Now this is one major cause of sickness behavior. Sickness behavior is categorized by feeling tired all the time, wanting to lay in bed, having an immune response all the time, which we can see in people with chronic fatigue syndrome, anhedonia, and fibromyalgia. Lipopolysaccharides can also worsen allergies. They can enhance stimulation of IgE mediated allergic responses, and they can also activate mast cells. Mast cells are critical for releasing histamine. Higher levels of LPS have also shown to increase mortality rates. LPS can also contribute to arthritis, gum inflammation, inflammation of the lungs. It's also shown to induce diabetes and insulin resistance, plays a role in polycystic ovarian syndrome. As we can see, serum lipopolysaccharide levels are associated with insulin resistance in people with PCOS. It can worsen atherosclerosis in the vascular system. Now, this is because lipoproteins act in response to protect the vascular system. Chronic inflammation, chronic inflammation from LPS has been linked to heart disease and heart attacks. LPS can also impair kidney, adrenal, and liver function and cause non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Just like it opens tight junctions in the gut, it can open up tight junctions of the blood biliary barrier. Say that three times fast. LPS can also contribute to weight gain. It can cause inflammation of fat cells, which then secrete cytokines and adipokines to stimulate more fat growth. It plays a role in eczema, psoriasis. Lipopolysaccharides can impair sleep and lower the time in REM sleep. It can cause bone reabsorption. It may also induce anxiety and depression. We can see that lipopolysaccharides reduce the amount of brain-derived neurotrophic factor in the hippocampus and prefrontal cortex. It can also induce depression via destruction of tryptophan in the chironine pathway. In animal models, it's shown to induce anhedonia. High lipopolysaccharide levels may also contribute to autism and social disorders. The ability to connect and feel with someone may be hindered by lipopolysaccharide levels. It's also shown to reduce verbal 
fluency. Lipopolysaccharides can worsen vision. It can cause neuroinflammation and get into the blood-brain barrier. It reduces the activity of the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA, which makes you feel calm, and can increase glutamate, thus causing excitotoxicity. It can induce brain fog through glucose and insulin dysregulation, neuroinflammation, and reduce cognition. Lipopolysaccharide may also inhibit the ability to create long-term memories. Lipopolysaccharides have shown to worsen multiple sclerosis. There have been recent studies showing that lipopolysaccharides may be a contributing factor to hypoxia during stroke and to worsen Alzheimer's disease, as it can significantly induce tau hyperphosphorylation and beta amyloid formation. It may be a root cause of Parkinson's disease. Lipopolysaccharides are toxic to dopamine neurons. For example, patients with Parkinson's disease have shown to have higher lipopolysaccharide levels, and in multiple animal studies, lipopolysaccharides cause dopaminergic dysfunction in Parkinson's disease. Lipopolysaccharide also plays a role in ALS. It affects HIV. It impairs reproductive function. It reduces mitochondrial and antioxidant status, and it makes pain worse. For example, lipopolysaccharide reduces the threshold that it takes to feel the sensation of pain. Now, I'm telling you all these downsides of lipopolysaccharides, and you're probably wondering, is there anything at all that's good about it? Well, possibly. There may be cancer. It can increase tumor suppressive genes, such as P53, but although it's shown to contribute to colon cancers. So that's a double-edged sword. We've seen people that are more tolerant to lipopolysaccharide may have a better immune response to bacterial infections. So what can we do to reduce this lipopolysaccharide induced endotoxemia that's contributing to all these diseases? First, we need to reduce stress. Stress opens up the intestinal barrier and allows these things to get into our bloodstream. Also, eating a diet low in inflammatory lectins can reduce the immune response and the opening of the gut barrier. You can find more about, you can find out more about a low lectin diet on mybiohack.com and get the diet and recipes there. Also in diet, we can do fasting, which should obviously reduce the burden of anything in the gut. And while high fat diets have shown to increase endotoxemia, omega-3s and polyunsaturated fats may have the opposite effect. Lastly, for diet, you may want to reduce alcohol exposure as that can contribute to dysbiosis. Now there's a concept called rebiosis, which is reintroducing good bacteria and stabilizing dysbiosis. To do that, we have to eat a lot of prebiotics and slash or take probiotics that promote bifidobacterium strains, butyrate producing strains, and T regulatory cells. This helps block some of the inflammatory response that lipopolysaccharide has. I like to use resistant starch and BB longum. Another concept is vagus nerve stimulation, which enhances the immune response to lipopolysaccharide tolerance. There's plenty of ways to do vagus nerve stimulation, but I use the Nirvana, which is a device you put in your ear and it stimulates your vagus nerve for you. You can find out more information where to get a discount in the description. Lastly, the endocannabinoid system, which we've discovered through experimentation with marijuana and cannabinoids, plays a big role in immune tolerance to lipopolysaccharides. LPS stimulates endocannabinoid synthesis, which thus regulates gut permeability. For example, a high fat diet can increase endocannabinoid levels, and we've also seen activating CB2 receptors while inhibiting CB1 receptors may protect against lipopolysaccharide and its ability to open tight junctions in the gut. I'm gonna give you my top five lipopolysaccharide inhibitors, and the rest you can find on the website at mybiohack.com. Here they are, vagus nerve stimulation, vitamin D, butyrate, black cumin seed oil, and nicotine. So there you have it, how lipopolysaccharide induced endotoxemia causes many chronic health conditions. Thanks guys for watching. And if you aren't a part of My Biohacks community yet, click subscribe and head over to our Facebook community through mybiohack.com. Thanks guys and stay beautiful.